welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got something a little bit special. We've got the long-awaited Airfix 148 scale Sea Fury Fighter Bomber 11. Been waiting for this kit for quite a while. There's been a lot of speculation about it. We saw a lot of CAD work during the development with Airfix about this particular kit. And finally it is here. So let's hope we're not too disappointed. This is my first look inside the box. Um, so again, I've heard things about it, about short shots and all these different horror stories about this kit. But honestly, this is the first time I've actually looked in the box with it. So you can see a lovely bit of box art on the front, as we can see just down in there. Uh, usual thing running around the box. To be honest, there isn't too much going on here. Kit number for this one, 6105. Okay, we can see over here. Okay, so down in here we've got the Hawker Sea Fury 801 Squadron HMS Glory from the Korean War 1952. And we've got the restored aircraft in uh, the markings of 802 uh, Squadron, uh, which was uh, during Eglinton, uh, Northern Ireland in 1948, which is now part of the historic uh, flight uh, down in Yeovilton in 2017, obviously being the darker one just down in there. Okay, so we've already had a quick slash around down in here we can pop this little guy open okay we are greeted by one big bag of bits we've got the obligatory sheet we can get rid of that so down in here we're hoping for we do have some nice markings that's great okay so instructions there fix his normal way of sort of doing them you can see down in this Okay, so straight away, looking down, we're going in there with the actual cockpit section, which is fair enough. So we've got rudder pedals, the control stick being fitted down there. Instrument panels, looks like we've got some separate decals for the actual instrument panel. And then we've got a seat going down on there, and we've got a backing put on there. We've got a front uh, bulkhead uh, with the instrument panel yoke system going down in there. And you can see some nice geometry layout showing how that's exactly going to go. And then obviously we've got the rear part uh, being fitted with the seat down into the instrument tub itself. Again, some nice good clear images showing how that's that's going to go a little bit of framework and side walling areas with some nice detailed shots down in here as well showing how that's all going to go down in there and actually that looks like a very tidy cockpit tub area okay down in the back end uh, obviously we're talking about fitting this in so it's going to be a straightforward onto the side okay a little bit of paintwork down the back end if you want to do that one we've got a nice big wing spar which is going to be absolutely great for holding this thing all together again showing you you want it 90 degrees so obviously keeping it all straight right the way through little tail wheel section being fitted down in there and then the two halves of the fuselage going together really impressed with that that looks actually very nice with that cockpit down in there uh, a couple of parts to take care of and then we can fit down in there for some actuators down in the wheel well section down in the middle and then that great wheel well section being put down in there decision time if you want to have the fuel tanks on there or not and obviously for the bits and versions you're going so you're going to be opening up those holes just before the wing brake section as it works down in there and then obviously we've got the actual wheel well being fitted down onto the lower wing section some of the other areas down the back end as well for the flaps and various things down in there those being fitted on and then the cockpit section drop down leading edge so that wing spar is going to be the leading edge of the wheel well section down here at the bottom as well with those parts sorry it's the gun barrels actually i have this around the wrong way so that's actually the gun barrels down at the front and the air takes intakes on the sides so again very nicely done indeed front cow with those massive exhausts coming off of this thing it's a huge engine on these which unfortunately we don't really get a detailed version of but we get a, a sort of an insight into shall we say as that one's being fitted down on there onto the front rear tail planes being fitted very nice we do have poseable uh, control surfaces so the tail planes uh, are being done and then we've got the rudder again showing the all important degrees of movement that you can get out of those so that's lovely as well then we've got some more details we've got a bit of framework going in there as well to give a nice section hopefully that means the wings are going to line up really nice something really nice about the way fx are doing these these good strengthening parts in there just allow those to come out so if you are doing it with the wings down you're going to be having this in as well so it's a good solid tab system of those being fitted down in there and then obviously we've got the actual ailerons being fitted in again if you're going to be going with the rockets don't forget to open up those holes it'll save a lot of time later so if you're going to go with rockets or free fell bombs depending off of the different version you're going to do and again control surfaces so we've got the aileron down here on the outside 14 and a half degrees up 17 and a half degrees down uh, on the deflection angles 
If you are gonna be doing it wings up, then obviously you've got that option. So down in here, looks like we've got a very nice uh, plastic part, which is gonna have some good detailing, obviously on the side wall, because you're gonna be seeing that a lot, and then some tabs to hold that obviously in the up position. And then again, you're gonna to need to cut these off, obviously if you're gonna be going wings up, and for the other sides and various things, opening up the holes, and then exactly the same again, and then showing deflection angle in the power down position, a 17 and a half degrees, obviously when it's disconnected from the controls. Okay, so that's quite a nice touch. Down on the back end, if you're gonna be doing it wheels up, so we've got the tailplane uh, down on there, so obviously you can close those all up, or the main gear well is gonna be closed up. If you are doing them open, obviously the main gear right the way through. Again, very nicely, very clearly illustrated of how that's exactly gonna go down in there putting those all in. Second part of the actual gear doors being fitted down into the center line area, and then the wheels. Again, very different way of doing this, having the hub separate right the way, and we'll see what the other side looks like. Could be great, it could be a little bit of a flap to do that, it'd be difficult to tell until you actually get around to doing it. And then obviously wheels being fitted, Again, nice picture of the alignment showing exactly how the gear doors are all supposed to be and how they lay down there from the various angles. So again, thanks Airfix for giving that little bit of reference. Prop being fitted on there, so you've got that gorgeous, huge five blade prop being fitted down in there with a the spinner cap being put on. And then obviously we've got various stores being put down from rocket assisted packs, right the way to camera pods, to actually fuel tanks, to free fill bombs or rockets, whichever way you're gonna be fitting or outfitting your actual aircraft, you can put it down just in there. And again, you've got different types of uh, ones, weaponry and armory being fitted down on there. Actually step uh, for getting on board, flaps being opened up for the radiators, things like that. Pito tubes, nav lights, arrestor hook all being fitted down in there. Canopy, open or closed, obviously personal choice on that one as well. Very straightforward. Okay, and there we go. So that's actually how we have it. So we've actually got that sort of the beige green underside color, that sort of raw navy uh, underside uh, with the actual uh, satin uh, extra dark sea gray over the top, beautiful color scheme, very, very classic. Okay, or we can go with the other one with them all over um, or down the sides, I should say, uh, extra dark sea gray with the actual uh, sky color underneath okay so depending on which one you want to do something a little bit more modern my local bird obviously just down on the bottom there stencil data uh, not too much at all so that's quite nice as you can see so there's a little bit down on there and again some stencil data for the bombs fuel tanks rockets as well but generally not too many running all over these all right so to be honest looking at that that's really positive we like the look of that indeed so down over here on the decals if we just switch to the close-up, you can see really nice, good, clean decals. And after literally uh, finishing off the Phantom last week, I can confirm that the decals went down beautifully. They looked fantastic. The carrier film having this sort of satin finish works really, really well. No problem with that at all. So depending on which version you're going to be doing, that's your decals. But, you know, Airfix, again, they've stepped up. The decals are absolutely beautiful. Right. Traditional one giant bag. So we'll just slice our way in here. Okay, now we're going to go straight in here. There's rumours abound about the short shot tail and what's wrong with it uh, and right with it and everything else like that. What we're all talking about, if we cut straight to it, is this. Now, I've seen other people's, and to be honest, other people's look worse than mine. Mine doesn't look too bad. I thought it was an engineering mismold. Uh, the way that this actually goes. But I've seen other people's which goes more to the top and more to the bottom, but it is this leading edge area of this uh, tail system. So we got this panel line coming up and then this one tends to come up to it. Personally, I don't think it's too bad. The other side, as you can see, is absolutely fine. You know, when you see them side by side, you can see what the problem is. We've got this guy in here, but it does appear, and again, this is just first impressions, but why, oh why, do we have a huge deep panel line and a very shallow one? You can probably see the difference straight off the bat. Now that is really odd. And again, when you carry these panel lines down on this side compared to this side, you can probably see by the darkness of this one on here, these panel lines on this side are a lot deeper than the ones on here. So it looks maybe this is more of an engineering type air fault um, of the tooling than the actual the model but if you look at obviously these two panel lines just down in here you can probably see how shallow they are but compared to these which are huge giant trenches um, and again this isn't I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you here 
and you can see how dark these panel lines are and it's not because of the light because if I reverse it you can probably still see how dark they are on this one with the mist mold um, so it's not like the shadow is catching it differently or anything else like this you can probably tell the panel lining on this one on this side is a lot less than this side okay so again if I rotate it around you can see the difference it looks like the tooling is different on both sides it's like it's overdone on this side they haven't just mirrored it and flipped it over and when you move it up you can probably see it's the same on both sides now why is that I have no idea you would think tooling would be the similar on both sides we know it's not a mirror but it does seem to be that the tooling on this side is a lot more this riveting detail just down in this area here is a lot stronger than this side okay very very odd it's all i don't know it's almost like if you can see down here at the back on the tailplane you see these uh four rivets or five rivets just down in here and then you look at them over here these are a lot stronger they're a lot heavier again the rivets on this tail area on this side are a lot stronger than this one not too sure what's going on there now I do have a little bit of insight into this kit because they use LiDAR on the real aircraft and I know the real aircraft. Um, having, as I said, I don't live very far from where this aircraft is stationed and I know they've got one in the museum and then obviously they've got the flying one as well. Um, and it just does seem to be a little bit odd whilst they would get such an error on there because, you know, obviously the museum one could be a Cypher Frankenstein but we know left and right look roughly the same on it. So yeah, so, you know, Technically, it's not a biggie, it's not a game changer, it's not a problem even, because to fix this little tiny chunk out of it here is going to be, I would say, three minutes with a bit of filler and maybe a little tiny bit of rescribing just to put it in after you've shaped it. It's not a game changer, it's not a problem with the kit at all, it's just odd whilst this side has definitely got deeper panel lines than the other side. It does seem just a little bit odd and it works its way through left and right one side is significantly deeper and sharper panel lines than the other side. Now, why that is and why Airfix have done that and why it hasn't been caught in any type of quality control between them designing it and us getting it as a kit, as a modeler, is a little bit odd. Um, I must admit, I'm not sure whilst that is uh, and why no one's found that, but there we go. Anyway, moving on with the rest of the kit, what are we looking at? So as you can see, just from a sprue point of view, if we just drop this top cam in just a little bit closer for you, there we go. You can see we have got a very, very nice laid out sprue. So down on here, obviously, we've got the fuselage halves we just moaned about. Okay, but moving on, you can see up the top here, we've actually got the um, tails. Uh, beautiful raised riveting detail as the real aircraft has and a beautiful line of raised rivets running right the way across. Exactly the same on the other side. We've actually got the rudder itself and again, catching it in the light, you can see all of that gorgeous detail, but you can probably see at the same time, we've got a sink mark right in the middle there just in front of my finger again annoying but it's not a showstopper exactly the same on the other side with these two working our way down on the front end then we've actually got the cows uh, no problem with those at all we've got some very nice detail riveting raised riveting and recessed down in here so generally we're not too bad at all but again it's really hard to get away from this fuselage it is glaring at you okay down on here we've actually got the tail planes uh, for the control surfaces again beautiful raised detail on all of those right the way through looking on the inside we haven't got anything really to show at all because obviously it's all external details but looking at the underside very nice job at the top here no problem with that at all again just a little bit odd nice thing about it it's not that horrible plastic they just used on the FX one. This one has that slightly stronger, harder plastic. It's not softly molded, so we do quite like that. Okay, wing section. As you can see down on here, plenty of detail. Again, you know, you have to ask the reason why. How comes the actual panel line detail on this is quite as heavy as it is again i had heard lots of rumors that it was heavy and over the top i think it's a little bit heavy for its scale but i have to say i don't think it's heavy and, and as moany as perhaps some people have been pointing out on this particular one i think it's not that far off a scale it is a little bit heavy but nothing bad we have got a tiny little bit of flash we start to work our way around here on this leading edge of the part you can probably see it's not the crispiest of molding okay but you can probably see from the part and we show it in the light beautiful sharp 
panel lining down on there we've got the blisters for the guns again looking very very nice nicely molded and again down on this one you can see we don't have any shape problems or anything else like that that looks very nice indeed and as we make our way over to the wings and we've got the stores down on there you can see really very very nice no problem with those at all the underside sort of center section you can see some really nice details there the ejector holes for the the cannons uh, and the radiator systems and everything up around it on the front here very very nicely done indeed we do have though i have to point it out some of the panel lining is actually uh it looks like i don't know perhaps it's bad tooling or something but it definitely is something in there fouling it all the way around again it's like you need to just pop in here with your rescribing tool and just open them up clean them through i don't think it's a mass problem but i just don't like the way that that's looking too much on the blind side for it all nice clean crisp easy to open up holes you can see them down on there no problems with those at all it actually looks very nice indeed uh, down in here we've got a lovely sprue with all the actual teardrops we can see this great detail down in here for the actual main well again annoying we've got a couple of ejector pens right in the midst of it and again these are raised and need taken out okay cockpit tub doesn't look too bad at all that's actually quite a nice setup. Instrument panel doesn't look too bad either. That looks quite nice down in there. And they'll see this rear ring, so we've got recessed details down in there. Unfortunately, we do have some ejector pins right in amongst the actual uh, main gear doors. That's a little bit of a pain. Would have been nice if we could get away without those. But again, we've actually got raised, you probably hear them, details down in there for the riveting, which is quite nice, okay? The teardrop tanks, the camera tanks, everything else like that looks quite nice. Again, a little bit odd. Don't know why that is, but you can probably see it here. I don't know if it's been knocked off or this is just short, but it looks like it's short molding down here for the eject, the pins, the locating pins for these to the actual bottom of the wing section. It looks like that they're missing. Okay, so again, that's not exactly brilliant. Okay, and this hub system we were a little bit concerned about it and i don't know if you can see but it looks like the hub isn't even center so that's not exactly the nicest point it is flat bulged wheels but and we have got this other hub system on here but the tread is raised so putting these two halves together down in here i think it's just going to cause trouble because you need to sand it all in it'll just be dependent on how these are going to line up and my major major worry is these obviously you've got two pins at each side two pins each side yeah so what's that what is this guy right by my nail you see it down in there what's that for that needs to come off i'm not even sure but that's been molded in it's not a a bit over or anything else it's clearly a, a bit of a missed thing there again it does make you wonder in tooling the bit where they sign off on it and think yeah that's a good that's fine that can carry on why people aren't spotting on this when i can just look at a sprue and see it Okay, so we've got a little bit of flash on some of the parts down in here as well. Uh, it's a complicated one, but we do have just a little bit of flash on some of these parts. A little bit of burring as well. Um, but again, nothing that can't be cleaned up with a couple of swipes of a, a sanding stick and things like that. This diff for the gear, again, it just looks a little bit softly molded. I would have liked this to be just a little bit sharper. But if we walk our way up very slowly, you can see these actually, the rockets look pretty good. Um, this sort of jetpack assisted takeoff again looks quite nice but it's a shame you're gonna to have to hollow out the ends i think just a little bit because they're just flat okay and then just looking around in here the underside yeah great potential i think the kit's all there it just needs a little bit of work and just to keep an eye on it exactly what you're doing with it okay so this is that wing fold mechanism we were looking at before and if we look at them each side it's a shame it's not quite a little bit more detailed you know you've got wiring you know you've got various things going down on here it looks like this has been sort of simplified how it actually is it'd be nice if it had holes running right the way through and various things but unfortunately i think airfix have missed out a little bit there it'd have been nicer to see those down in there the prop though i have to say is a thing of beauty that's a very nice job nice cleanly molded nice and smooth no sink marks no nasties anything in that whatsoever so that's quite good got a little bit of burring perhaps on the the back edge of it as you can probably see it just under there but that's not really a problem to take care of nicely we have got hollowed out exhausts catching them in the light that's a very nice touch and again we've got some nice detail not that you're ever going to see it down here for the hub with a prop the spinner again looks very nice indeed 
not the sharpest in the world but again it's a tooling thing trying to get tooling to slide in and out so that's what they've done with that one rather than try and put a groove into it and again it's not too bad it's all very very nicely stuck okay the clear parts let's hope and pray we're all good here so yeah again fx seem to have got this nailed down let's hope it goes on well Main canopy, again, no problem, no center seam, no nothing, no real distortions down in there, a little bit of wobble, but this is obviously quite a thick piece. I think that's absolutely perfectly acceptable. The front windscreen looks very, very nice with that sort of thick armor glass. So the side ones may be a little bit wobbly, but we've got no mismolds or anything else in there. We've actually got the camera is crystal clear, no problem with that at all, a little bit of distortion, but you know for what you're using it for. The actual uh, nav lights on the outside are molded, so you can just pop those in. So that's actually quite a nice touch with those as well. That looks actually very nice indeed. So again, I have to say, having just finished literally last week, as I said, the 70 second new school, uh, new tool Phantom, it gave a few headaches right the way through. I imagine this is gonna give a few headaches right the way through. It's not the cleanest uh, and best kits that are out there, definitely, but at the end, it's nice to see we've got a nice new tool version going right the way through. I know loads of people have messaged me already and said, what about your tail? Have you got a short shot? You've seen mine now, I don't know how yours is. I have seen photos of other ones and that is a bigger, problem at the back but again we're modelers you could of course write straight off to airfix and demand a replacement um, or you could just glue it together and pop a little bit of filler in it rescribe it and probably have no problem it's not a mass problem it's not a deal breaker i've had worse problems and if you just seen my last build of the phantom you'll know i had a full short shot on the tailplane so i had to replace it with plastic card and basically blend smooth rescribe and everything into that one to actually fix the problem but again 10 minutes and if you've got any basic modeling skills it's not really a problem you can do those so anyway so from that point of view i don't think the kit is going to be a problem i love the cockpit i think the cockpit's a very nice touch but just as a follow-up on this one i do intend to build this one in the very near future so i have got for it these so i have got eddard's full color set for this one so just off of the edge there it's fe878 uh, is the number for this one but there we go that is the actual and you can see full color cockpit set for that one for you guys who are a little bit like me who don't want to bother painting it or using the decals and then down in here we have got as you can see some harnesses because those are missing from the kit there's no option for harnesses down there so we've got some of their steel ones so if you are thinking about that one you've got that one fe789 for it which is the steel uh, 148 uh, seat belt set for it as well so if you just wanted to do what i think it needs just to lighten it up a little bit those are the two options i'm going to go for when i build mine in the near future as always once i built it i'll pop back and give you a roundup exactly how i thought it went on but for now i actually think it's not a bad kit i think there's a few little problems with it but nothing that actually just basic modeling skills can take care of and you can move along quite nicely not sure about this panel lining each side of it maybe somebody can let me know exactly what going on there because i can't see a reason why it would need to be one Anyway, that is Airfix's new tool 148 scale Hawker Sea Fury FB11 kit.